Gorilla Mode 1, Gorilla Mode 2. This is a video I've tried about 10 times now. I cannot seem to be concise enough to consolidate and summarize what we've done to this formula and the changes. And hopefully that shows how passionate I am about what we've done here. It's an amazingly successful product. Very proud of it and grateful for what it's done for this company. And also uh, that it stood the test of time for almost five years now. Um, it's kind of wild to think back that I put this out in 2019. That's crazy to me. So anyway, like I said, I tried to film this so many times. Initially, I was gonna do a one hour deep dive that was gonna fit on Instagram. Turns out Instagram has one hour time limits. So it's going to be a long form YouTube video similar to this. This was my first deep dive dissection into a formula. Shockingly, at the time, it was well received. The reason I say that is because I would have never thought that anyone would wanna sit through me droning on for like an hour and a half about, you know, the max efficacious dose of L-citrulline or, you know, why creatine is good or why you might want to use betaine, peri-workout, or, you know, what is the mechanism of caffeine? At that time, it seemed far-fetched that anyone would want to listen to me talk for that long, but they did, seemingly, and people, nerds alike, uh, all came together <laughs> who also have a passion for working out, and this formula really took off in popularity, and it's been extremely successful to date, so much so that we really haven't had to do anything to it. In fact, I could leave it as is, and it would continue to be very successful because it's great. And I'm very proud of it. However, over, you know, five years, you can imagine I learn a lot. And when you get tens of thousands of reviews and a lot of feedback and have tried, you know, formulated many other products since and seen the synergy of new combinations of ingredients and new literature has emerged and even met very influential and intelligent people who have their own insights, you want to integrate that into your products, or at least if you want to stay on the cutting edge and be innovative, it's a natural progression to at some point make some updates. So this is the first major update to Gorilla Mode ever and it is significant as you can see the tub is literally much larger there are hundreds more grams of ingredients in here like i was saying at the beginning of the video i tried filming this already unsuccessfully several times i will do a deep dive video that will i can almost assure you answer every single question you have in fairly elaborate detail and it will be time stamped too so don't worry about sitting through a two-hour video just look to the time stamps and find the part you want and hopefully it's addressed and if it's not feel free to drop a comment or email customer service and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take care of it. But in this video, I wanted to make a succinct summary that breaks down the new formula and the changes from the old one, just so we have a high level overview of what we've done. Overall, if I was to summarize the effects difference, there is more pump as you would expect, there is better overall performance from a muscular endurance standpoint, hydration capacity, you know, the standard vectors you would assume to be in pre-workout. There's a little bit more stim for sure. However, the nootropic component is elevated quite significantly, which augments the perceived impact of the stim hit as well, kind of having a one plus one equals three effect. So over time, I've made several formulas, um, some that have been almost like dark horse products that not a lot of people have tried yet, but are missing out on, like Respawn. Our energy drinks, which have become very successful as well, among other things. And certain synergies of ingredients have become apparent to me as very worthwhile to include in what is our flagship product, ultimately, that we want people to have the best experience with when they try from all areas, not just in you know your maximum pump or what have you and just your base amount of caffeine like we wanted this to be comprehensive stacked and as you can see this thing is it was already stacked in my opinion at the time especially it was considered to be one of the most potent pre-workouts in the market now the standards have been raised and we have updated it to what is essentially borderline a protein tub if i added anything more to this this literally would end up <laughs> would have ended up in a protein tub which you know I think this is like the threshold of pre-workout, what you can fit in it essentially. So getting into the changes, what we did and why. So breakdown of the supplement facts panel, we're gonna start off with niacin, 32 milligrams, niacinamide. B6 as P5P, 20 milligrams. It's biologically active methylated format. B12, methylated B12, methylcobalamin, bioactive, 250 micrograms. This is to support neurotransmitter conversion pathways specifically. It is not to act as a multivitamin. This is something I've been critical of of formulas in the past. If you've seen my videos, oftentimes the sprinkling of vitamins does not have a little, lot of rhyme or reason. In this case, it is specific to dopamine synthesis and just supporting enzymatic pathways just in case to cover bases. It is not meant to be perceived to be a B complex. Magnesium, as magne magnesium bisglycinate, 50 milligrams. Sodium, 380 milligrams coming from pink Himalayan sea salt, 
There's also chloride as well. Potassium, as potassium chloride, adding to the chloride hit from the sodium and the pink Himalayan sea salt, 380 milligrams. L-citrulline, 10,000 milligrams. Cretine monohydrate, 5,000 milligrams. L-tyrosine, 5,000 milligrams. Betaine, anhydrous, 4,000 milligrams. Hydroprime glycerol powder, 4,000 milligrams. Malic acid, 3,000. Pink Himalayan sea salt, 1,000. Alpha GPC, 50%, 800 milligrams. Caffeine anhydrous, 400 milligrams. Huperazine A, 200 mics. Of the changes of note, just firing them off quickly, caffeine went up from 350 to 400. Citrulline went from 9 grams to 10 grams. Tyrosine went from 1,500 milligrams to 5,000 milligrams. Betaine anhydrous went from 2,500 to 4,000 milligrams. Glycerol went from 3,000 to 4,000, and huperazine A went from 400 to 200. So of these dosage changes, why were they done? In particular, I think caffeine, in general, a lot of people have developed a... Well, if you look in the literature, honestly, you will find the most potent ergogenic effects are at dosages that are often shockingly high, I would say. And 400 is ultimately the threshold at which it's considered safe. So... For us, you can still modulate accordingly. The formula is so stacked that even at one scoop, if you're getting 200 mg of caffeine, the formula is like still fully efficacious from all angles. It is something that I'm not worried about, you know, pushing another 25 mg of caffeine per scoop. I think it was just a good way to make the formula uh, push to the height that it could from the stimulant vector or at least the caffeine. Notable though, the complementary adjunct to that is the nootropic elements that have been cranked up quite significantly through tyrosine, alpha GPC, the B, B vitamin support is a bit more negligible, but ultimately this formula is far more heavily oriented to dopamine uh, synthesis, adrenergic cascades, as well as just putting you into a state of heightened focus, mental clarity, sharpness, drive, motivation, ready to go balls out in the gym, essentially. Like this is something that I think you'll notice a pretty dramatic uh, uptick, not necessarily in overstimming you, because again, there's only 25 milligrams more caffeine per scoop. Rather, it is far more tunnel vision inducing or focus enhancing. Ultimately, the energy component is heightened, but the nootropic component brings this to a one plus one equals three kind of effect that I feel replicated among other formulas we've already tried and tested over the years has been very well received and produces a very noticeable effect that is uh, not over the top stimulating and feels uh, very, very conducive to getting things done and being quite effective with the work input that you are providing to whatever activity it is you are doing, which in this case would be the gym. So anyways, that is kind of the summary, at least at a high level that I could give of some of the dopaminergic highlights and emphasis. Notable though, removal of ingredient, kana. This is something that is serotonergic and we found to be almost blunting of the what is ultimately supposed to be an acute energy enhancing dopamine pushing formula. Kana is great and I still really like this ingredient. However, over time it became less and less what we deem to be conducive to the ideal gorilla mode pre-workout experience. It is something that is, I feel more oriented to like an all around full day nootropic, not necessarily something that is going to be helping in the gym acutely. In fact, we found it to be somewhat blunting of what we were trying to seek out of the cognitive component, at least from a aggression and energy output standpoint. In addition, it's notoriously bad for flavoring. So our flavor systems are way better now. We have what I would consider to be S tier flavor systems now compared to Gorilla Mode 1.0. And that is, you know, Part of that was been made possible by removing Kana. Kana is terrible to flavor and tastes horrible. So it is uh, something that I wasn't too hesitant to remove personally. Um, and I think it actually improved the formula overall. In addition to that, the citrulline, betaine, glycerol, basically the nitric oxide precursor component, the osmolite hyperhydrating component, the fluid regulation component like a lot of this stuff has been standardized to meet what was ultimately at a time the most efficacious dose we feature of these ingredients in nitric so nitric had a differentiating 10 gram dose of citrulline it had the four grams of betaine it had the four grams of glycer pump at the time which is now hydro prime by the way because hydro prime is a 
also a 65% glycerol powder that has, you know, the same attributes of stability enhancing, you know, so it's not this uh, clumpy disaster. It's more resilient to environmental changes than, you know, traditional glycerol monosterate, which also has a very low yield. Ultimately, it's still 65% though, just like Glycer Pump, but it came out after Glycer Pump, so it's not like this even existed to put into here when we came out with it, but it is slightly superior, seemingly, <coughs> than Glycer Pump, so we made the switch recently. But circling back to the dosages to match Nitric, ultimately at the time when Nitric came out, and this accounts partly for the difference in perceived potency, we were trying to basically present okay, well, if we're going to have stimulants and make this a Swiss army knife formula for guerrilla mode, nitric has to have some differentiating component as well. It can't just be stim free and that's it. So we increase the dosage of certain vasodilators and plasma expanders and hyperhydrating agents and made it something that would stand on its own as worth using in conjunction with mode as part of your stack of sorts. That said, there are unique vectors of nitric that stand on their own as worthwhile and for what we wanted to be ultimately the stack formula that also has stims and nootropics it just kind of made sense to include what we deem to be the maximum effective dose of what are the pillars of the performance components of the formula so i didn't want to you know intentionally skim a gram of citrulline off just to have it be like slightly worse than nitric or skim a gram and a half of betaine this time around like at the time mode was what it was and then nitric came out after it where i pushed everything further but i've never had a chance to actually bring it back to parity since until now which is where we come in with the new and improved mode which is matching a lot of the uh nitric dosages so a lot of you guys will be happy about that hopefully and it definitely takes it up a notch in terms of pump performance stress resilience in the gym an array of attributes which we can get into and we will in the youtube video one of the decreases the huperzine is notable it is ultimately to accommodate the 800 milligram introduction of alpha gpc because you can't just push cholinergics to high hell all the time and we have energy drinks with cholinergics we have pre-workout with it we have nootropic capsules like a lot of it is overlapping if you don't if you're not cognizant of this so we felt like this was a worthwhile change and also helped with global compliance as well. Another notable fact on global compliance is the removal of N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate. So a lot of people know this to be a exotic stimulant of sorts. However, over the years, I have noticed that it's actually not as big of a difference as I would have thought. You know, at the time we were led to believe, you know, N-phenethyl, it's like, you know, the next, you know, two amino or DMHA or something. But it is uh, what I have seen at least to be seems to be like a fairly regarded as safe and benign kind of like stimulant almost but more like a cognitive enhancing or mood elevating nootropic it actually does not augment energy levels that dramatically and over the years i've just seen less and less out of it to really feel like it needs to be in the formula and it was hindering the formula from a global compliance standpoint as well so to me getting rid of it was not really that big of a concern given that the stuff we added in and increased more than made up for the removal and in fact i would be shocked if anyone noticed less cognitive benefits and attributes out of this than they did with the previous formula that said some people like enphenethyl and it's unfortunate to see it go but to me it was actually not adding a whole lot that i wasn't getting plus more when i get into the um, cholinergic optimization, the dopamine precursors that we crank to high hell, etc. So to me, you know, this wasn't really that big of a loss. Biopairing, this is something that I have learned, often makes no sense. So this is something that many of us were led to believe enhances bioavailability of basically everything you put in your formula, including, you know, things like estrogen, like, oh, you just put it in and then everything gets absorbed better. But often it doesn't really make sense. You know, if you look at a lot of formulas in the industry, it's like, you know, when you have something like curcumin plus bioparin, you can understand why it would be included to enhance bioavailability significantly. However, when you're putting a gut irritant into a pre-workout solely to try and get a speculative bump in bioavailability out of ingredients that don't really have any documented literature to support that they actually will get that out of this you know, adjunct ingredient, it doesn't really make sense from an ROI standpoint to be utilizing it. So if I want to get more of an effect out of an ingredient, 
rather than using what is a known gut irritant or something that is going to, you know, shown in a Petri dish to maybe enhance like amino acid uptake, like how about I just use more of that ingredient and use the maximum efficacious dose found in the literature? Why don't I just use more of that rather than using some speculative thing that may have unintended consequences that are not documented in humans at the end of the day in combination with these other things like I don't know. Anyway, to me, it just didn't really make, it made less and less sense over the years. And I'm not saying there's a bad ingredient. It's just context dependent about when it's included is very important. Lastly, agmatine. I like agmatine. It's something that has vasodilation like indirect effects and also affects pain tolerance to some extent. And I think it's worth consideration in a pre-workout for sure. And it was in gorilla mode. However, we literally maxed out the size of what is actually a bigger tub than the previous one. So we couldn't add anything more to it without it being, again, like I said, a protein container essentially. So Agmatine was one of the things that had to get the ax in order for this to fit in what is the biggest container we could use without it just getting into absurdity territory. So it's still a nitric at a high enough dose to get the effect you would want out of it if you were going to use it as a complementary vasodilating enhancing adjunct to this. However, we think this is more than well-rounded enough to stand on its own. It doesn't need the agmatine. And I think the ch other changes I made were far more impactful than any removals that happened. So I'm this formula to me is a clear-cut improvement, significant increase in potency, hundreds of, milli hundreds of grams more ingredients per tub. And these are all high-utility ingredients that have a purpose and are there for a reason. So to get into those reasons, which I would absolutely go on an absolute rampage talking about right now, if I had no time limit, I can't do that. So check out the YouTube video when it comes out in the next couple of days. But ultimately the high level takeaways from the changes that have been made to the formula is our max dose increased from 30 grams to 40 grams of ingredients. It comes in a bigger tub. We're essentially at the capacity for actives now without transitioning to a protein container, like I said. That said, more ingredients doesn't always mean better. I've seen people stack BCAAs into pre-workouts and then, you know, claim, oh, you know, we have like 50 gram scoops or whatever. It's like, it doesn't matter how many grams it is if there's not a point of it or there's no actual utility to the inclusion. So keep that in mind that I'm not just saying that because it sounds impressive grams wise. I'm saying it because these are ingredients that I actually think make a difference and the grams are that much more. So that is of note, not fluff ingredients. Um, these are things that I actually think are worthwhile. Formula updates are based on the most recent literature. And I don't know when we hit this, but there has been at least a million orders to date, which is absolutely mind blowing, but we've had tons, tons of feedback. Like I am far more, educated and rigorous and have the capacity to make these judgment calls with such a greater level of insight and meticulous oversight than I did with this one because it was essentially me putting in based on no customer data, no uh, sample size of any significance data, personal anecdotes from me at the time five years ago. It was still by all means a literature backed formula and represented what was the best at the time for me. But, you know, a lot has changed since then. And this is the representation of, you know, almost five years of change. So I think it's uh, pretty cool that I've even been afforded this opportunity to be able to implement that much insight and information into a what was such an amazing pre-workout to begin with, just getting that much better. It's, you know, I'm over the moon about it and I'm stoked to see how this one does and how much you guys like it. Markedly increased energy, focus, drive, stress resilience, pump power, and overall performance. So these are all the vectors I felt most worthwhile short of just making this a kitchen sink formula. Cause of course we could have been like, all right, here's the new pre-workout. And it's like a fucking protein jug. <laughs> but we're not going to see that because it would be impossibly cost prohi prohibitive at that point And probably, it, there's like a certain point where more is not better. So for us, this is, uh, you know, I maxed out the areas that I felt most worthwhile given the information I have assimilated to date. So flavor systems. So a lot of you guys like the original flavors. However, like I said, there was limitations to it through the, you know, Kana being in it. We just knew a whole lot less back then, you know? So having new standardized flavor systems that we've developed over the last at minimum one year, like I've gone back and forth on these so many times, I can confidently say 
I would call these like S tier flavors, in my opinion. Like these are far better than our previous flavors. And I think you guys will really like them. In addition, they are naturally colored now. No more swamp water pre-workout. This is, uh, <laughs> not that it's bad. Like no one really seemed to care that much, but it looks more visually appealing now and there's not artificial colors in it. And you know, it looks cool. Less clumpy and gritty. So the formula has more actives though. So keep in mind, this is not like a grit free pre-workout. This is not meant to be, you know, the lightest thing out there in terms of the amount of powder you have to ingest. So if this is something that is not GI friendly for you by chance, or, you know, creatine doesn't sit well with you in a pre-workout, that is where something like, this is something that only exists as of recent, Gorilla Mode Base would be great for you. This is our creatine free, kind of like bare bones, Gorilla Mode Base formula that has the infrastructure of this with the citrulline, with a efficacious dose of betaine, some tyrosine, heavy hit of caffeine, cholinergics. It is the base of the formula, kind of like the, the legs it stands on. And it has no creatine. It mixes amazingly. This is probably the best tasting formula, but it is mostly because there is, you know, such a lesser amount of actives as well. For the amount of actives we put into this new formula, it tastes incredible um, and much better, like I said, than the previous formula. And Less clumpy and gritty, despite the fact that the servings went from a 30 gram max dose to a 40 gram max dose. So I'm very thrilled with it personally. Um, and the fact that it has better mixability despite having that much more ingredients too. So those are all the biggest changes, you know, bigger tub, more ingredients, knowledge over the past five years, tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of bottles sold and feedback to actually assimilate into the new formula. I could go on all day. <laughs> like this thing is, uh, there's a lot to get into and it gets uh, pretty intensive, but that is my high level. What I hope to be succinct, but probably was not at all, overview of Gorilla Mode 2.0. I hope you guys love it. Um, I'm very proud of this, as I am of Gorilla Mode 1.0, which is still an absolutely amazing formula. And if this is one that you want to capitalize on, you know, some of you are going to miss the Kana inclusion, the N-phenethyl, um, Agmatine, like if you want the OG formula, it is some units still available. I don't know how long they'll last, but there are some flavors still in stock. So if you're wanting to stock up, this is not just like a, you know, a, a sales tactic thing. Like it is not coming back. I promise it is not coming back. If you want to buy it, like this would be the time to stock up. But otherwise, you know, Gorilla Mode 2.0 up for sale. And I hope you guys love it. Like I said, I'm very proud of how it came together and I think it's uh, really gonna take us to the next level. And we have five flavors being released today. Cherry Blackout, Fruit Punch, Cotton Candy Grape, Orange Rush, and Blackberry Lemonade. In the coming weeks, we will come out with Bombsicle as well as Tiger's Blood, Mouthwatering Watermelon. And the weeks thereafter, hopefully we start to phase in the rest of the catalog as well. But yeah, we will be, all of your favorite flavors, if they're not in stock yet, will be in stock in the very near future. But this thing's amazing. It's stacked. It is my favorite thing I've created probably for the brand, short of maybe the energy drinks or, I don't know, the Gorilla Mind uh, Nootropic Formula. Flagship of the brand. First big, big uh, pivot for it since 2019. And I think you guys will love it. Check it out, GorillaMind.com. Uh, stoked to see what you guys think. Talk to you guys soon. I'll see you on YouTube if you want to nerd out for two hours on this stuff.